Hey guys, Al Tavis Pelzer here coming to you with yet another episode of the Speakeasy Podcast. Listen, this Boys the Men series has been beyond, like it went above and beyond what I expected. And I think it's because the men are awesome. That's one. But the other piece of it is that they've been so transparent. They have literally dug deep and giving you guys some insight into their personal lives, their business lives, and what it has really meant for them to go from being a boy to a man uh, in so many different aspects. I mean, from self-care to having a conversation, a, a live conversation with your father in front of, you know, however many listeners and viewers tuned in. So many things that really do affect our men in the here and now um, that we're looking to be able to elevate from and heal from, you know, as, as we can. So I'm excited about that, but I'm also excited about today's guest. I consider him one of my big brothers in the industry, Uh, looking at what he's been able to do in business, looking at him as a speaker and his personal journey as well. And so I know that it will definitely touch several of you. Uh, Be sure that you come and let us know how the episode resonates with you. So with that being said, hey, Harold. Hey, little sis. Thank (laughs) you so much for inviting me. I'm so excited about this series. So excited. Oh, my goodness. When you said yes, I was just like, Oh, this conversation is going to be amazing. (laughs) I knew it was going to be fire. So, Harold, let everyone know a little bit about who you are, and then we'll dive into today's topic. So, I'm from originally from Oakland, California. I'm an entrepreneur. I started my first business when I was 29 years old, had no idea what I was doing. I just had a dream and a vision. Within two years, my business was doing over a million dollars in sales. Within three years, we were almost four million. Um, I'm also an author. I write books because I teach what I'm trying to learn. So all my books really have been therapy for me. So um, I'm also an author and a speaker. And I just recently launched a, a health supplement company called Good Living Now for folks, targeted really for folks that are over 40. That part. So it's interesting because uh, that leads us right into our first question, which is what is a dad story or a father story that has really made an impact on your business? Mm. Well, you know, I grew up in the hood. And so my dad was what I would call a pharmaceutical salesperson, not the legal kind. (laughs) So I grew up in the projects where I saw a lot of pharmaceutical entrepreneurs. And from a very early age, I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I always wanted to be a a business owner. But what I knew from watching my dad, I didn't want to end up like my dad because I knew even then that folks that were pharmaceutical sales folks like my dad, they ended up in two places, jail or dead. And to me, those were not options that were something I was interested in. And so it was really growing up in the hood, which really kind of sparked my entrepreneurial journey. And I remember uh, living in the projects in our apartment, in my closet in my bedroom, I would always make it into, uh, I would make a little makeshift desk and I would pretend like that was my office and I would pretend like I was a businessman. So very early on, I knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Um, And so I always kept that in my heart. And one of the things that I discovered from that is that for so many of us out to these, what we are called to be and to do in this world is often revealed to us when we're very young, when we're young. The challenge for most of us is that people around us who don't have dreams and visions talk us out of our dreams and vision. But fortunately for me, I got involved in this program called the Upward Bound Program when I was in middle school. And it was a program that was targeted for low-income, first-generation college students. That, um, and so I only, to be honest with you, I only signed up because they gave me $5 for coming every Saturday. That was my motivation. But it turned out to be such a life-changing experience for me because what it did for me was 
it showed me people who look like me, who had gone on and gone to college, who came from the same community. So it helped to give me a larger vision of what my life possibility could be. And for so many people who get stuck in poverty and get stuck in lack, they're stuck there because they don't have a larger vision for their possibility. And so for me, that was the thing that kept me going, even in spite of the fact, Altavis, I was not a great student. On my best day, I got a C. I remember one time I got a B minus and my mother got real excited. And I was like, mama, don't get too excited because this may not happen again. So um, for me, seeing my dad, seeing, what he, uh, seeing the people in my community really sparked that entrepreneurial journey. But, um, but getting involved in the Upward Bound program and being exposed to other brothers who had gone down the legit path really gave me the foresight of where I could go. And so um, that's really what led me down, you know, my entrepreneurial path, I guess you would say. Oh my goodness, that speaks volumes. When we think about the significance of the after school programs, the boys and girls clubs, the YMCAs, um, Upward Bound. It, listen, I even think about who was it, McGruff, <laughs> the crime dog. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> These early on programs, and some of them are still relevant and still being used today, uh, right. they really did make an impact. And interestingly enough, they didn't always get the funding or the support that they really needed. And mm -hmm. I think we didn't really judge how much of an impact that they were making because we were looking at the here and now. Right, and not really right. projecting five, 10 years out. So right. I think that's really significant because one of the things that you said was that you looked at the here and now of what, you know, <laughs> the, the neighborhood pharmaceutical <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> workers were doing. <laughs> right. And you projected out and said, 10, 15 years from now, I don't want that to be my story. Right, right. And I also learned from them. There were some things that I learned from my dad because he was successful in what he did. So I learned marketing from my dad. I learned how to market. I learned how to hustle. I knew that you had to work. It wasn't just going to happen for, for you. So there were some valuable things that I learned just in watching him, you know, and how he maneuvered. And my dad was serious about his customer service. He made sure his customers were happy. And I used that when I started my first business. Now that's significant uh, because, you know, being able to flip it and, and look at the lessons within it, that's something that's really significant in anybody's journey, but especially in the journey of, you know, going from being that boy to that man. Right. You know, a lot of times it's hard for us to find the lesson because right. we dealing with the pain, we dealing with <laughs> we dealing with right. the judgment, we dealing with the low self esteem, we dealing with the labels that have been placed on us. So, with that being said, I know one of the labels coming up is that people always say you're going to be just like your dad, you're going right. to be just like this person. So, right. how were you able to remove that label to say? No, I can take what he taught me, but I'm not going to be just like him. Right. And I used to hear that so often because I look a lot like my dad. I'm named after my dad. So everything about me was, should have taken me down that path. Now, to be totally transparent, though, for years, I didn't like my dad because my dad was abusive toward my mom. And so as a little boy, to hear and witness your mom be abused, I didn't realize how traumatic that was for me. But I knew I didn't want to be like my dad. I'm like, you know, this dude is vicious. This dude is, you know, I didn't, I did not like him. And so I knew that I wanted to be the opposite of what he represented. And, um, and so I, even though I wasn't great in school, I stuck at it and I kept at it because I didn't want to give up because I didn't want to fall into, you know, 
being a statistic and, and, and having no options and having no goals. Because again, from a little kid, I just always had dreams and goals. And one of the things that I appreciated about my dad, that even though he was not a great dad growing up when I was younger, um, he never discouraged me. He never told me what I couldn't do. He never told me that I was, he never gave me those negative labels. So I didn't have to deal with that trauma. I had to deal with the trauma of the abuse and having, and one of the things that I learned out of these is that so often as a kid, when you experience trauma, you know, that's when we start learning how to put on masks because I would hear my mother be beaten in the other room and I would be so afraid and upset, I would put the pillow over my head because I didn't want to hear the screams. And in my mind, I would tell myself I was dreaming because I didn't want this to be real. But then the next day I would get up and go to school as if nothing happened. And I would come home and we we're all acting like nothing happened. And that's where I started learning how to put on a mask around my pain, around my fear, around my discouragement. And that became my norm. That became my norm. It was only later on in life when I started having panic attacks that I realized that something, something is wrong. Something is off. And I remember my mother asking me, and this was years after all of that, I probably was in my late 20s. My mom would bring up certain uh, situations that happened in my childhood, and I couldn't remember them. My mother was like, don't you remember? And I, I there was such a large part of my childhood that I just didn't remember because of that trauma. But even in spite of that trauma, I was able to hustle, hustle because I wanted to take my mother out of that situation. I just wanted to take care of my mama. My mom became my why. When you have a big enough why, you can press and get through anything. And so my mom was the reason why I, when I got to college and I almost flunked out, I was on academic probation the whole year. My mom was the reason why I didn't quit. I wanted to quit every single day because I didn't know what I was doing. I'm flunking all these classes, but I'm like, I got to do this because I got to be able to take care of my mom. I don't want my mom to worry about that. I don't want my mother to have to ever struggle anymore. So my mom became my why. Okay. Whew. Okay. Had to get my tissues ready for that one because, whoo, it's, it, you know, it's that healing process is something else. Mm -hmm. That healing right. process, it's, it's not always a pretty process. It's not always uh, a process that we, you know, we, we want others to see. That's, that's a, that's right. a, <laughs> everyone would like to heal behind closed doors. Right, right. 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 Everyone would like to heal behind closed doors, but I commend you because part of what makes you so significant when I look at you as a man of valor, when I look at you as a man of, you know, someone who is doing some significant things within the world, when I look at you, I'm like, I see your story. I see what you've been through. I see, you know, you've been able to tell your story and the things that you've overcome. And that's why it's been so significant for me. What has allowed you to be able to be transparent enough to share your story and, and, and go through that healing in a public display and know every single thing. Now, granted, Speakeasy Podcast listeners, I'm not saying that every part of his life, you're going to go and see it on Google, but <laughs> But he shared some really in-depth things within his life and his journey that, you know, most people, that's, you know, what goes on in this house stays in this house. Mm, right. And that happens in most of our, our households. It's like, what goes on here? And for me, I live with so much shame most of my life. I live with the shame of being on welfare. I hated the fact that we were on welfare. I hated the fact that my dad was in and out of prison. In fact, as a kid, I would lie. When my dad would be in prison, I would tell people my dad was in the military because I just didn't want that reality. So I carried a lot of shame 
throughout most of my young adult life, my childhood, I carried a lot of shame. I was always afraid that if people really knew who I was and what I had gone through, that they wouldn't like me, that they wouldn't accept me. And so for me, sharing my story really is healing for me. And I, my prayer that it's healing for someone else because I learned not to stand inside of my story, but to stand on top of it. Because what I went through didn't destroy me. And so I'm better for everything that I went through. You know, we say it all the time, but I don't know if we really mean it when we say all things work together for good. Everything that we have gone through, everything that we have been through, there is value. There's something in there. Is is a, a lesson or a blessing in there, not only for us, but for someone else. And how dare we get silent with our story when there are people who are hurting, when there are people who are giving up. I know for me, hearing someone else tell their truth, how it helped to save me and encourage me during my most deep, dark hours when I wanted to give up. Just hearing someone else tell their story of how when they fell and how they got back up, you know, that helped me. I remember back in the day, this is when Les Brown first came out about 30 years ago. I remember watching him on PBS. He's talking about how he got fired and how he was labeled educatively disabled and all this other stuff. And I remember being so inspired and so encouraged just by him being vulnerable enough and courageous enough to tell his truth. I'm like, wait a minute. And he said in one of those broadcasts, he said, look, if you fall down, you fall backwards. Because if you can look up, you can get up. And I said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. And so that helped me, that encouraged me. And so my job while I'm on this earth, if I can do anything to help to encourage someone else to remember who they are and whose they are in the midst of t trouble, in the midst of setbacks, in the midst of devastation. If I can just remind somebody that you can get back up, your life is not over and you have absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing to be ashamed of. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Speak Easy Podcast listeners, I hope you caught that. I hope you took notes. Uh, there is nothing for you to be ashamed of. And Man, when we think about that, you know, that shame, it, if you're not ashamed, then guess what? Nobody can hold that over your head. Right. They can't hold that noose around you. They can't hold that over your head because you've owned who you are. And so uh, that was so very valuable for all of our listeners, the men and the women. Um, man, I I can't even say anything else. Uh, <laughs> like that was that was a mic drop moment. Seriously, because that shame has held so many people back, and and I mean it's held us back for decades, guys. It it, it hasn't just held us back. It's held grandparents back and great grandparents back. And um, at some point, we have to be the one to say, "I'm going to break this." I'm going to break this. Oh my goodness. This has been an amazing episode. Uh, Harold, let everyone know where they can reach out to you um, and how they can connect with you online. Okay. So I'm on Facebook, Instagram, all of them, Harold LaFall, two F's, two L's. Um, my website is thegoodlivingnow.com, thegoodlivingnow.com. And uh, yeah, those are the platforms that I'm on. Guys, man, make sure that you join the conversation. You know that we have been bringing you some great men um, all throughout this month. You'll be hearing great stories, but not just that. I made sure to strategically place men in front of you who wanted to give you not just a hand out, but a hand up. Uh, so any of the men that you hear on this series are men that you can definitely reach out to personally if you need someone to connect with, if you need someone to, you know, kind of go through some things and say, you know what, I just need to kind of work this out in my head. Connect, connect, connect with them online, connect with them through email personally. Uh, because guess what? You, where you are does not have to be your end. It does, it's not the end of your chapter. It's not the end of your book. It's, it may not even be the end of your paragraph reach out and get the help that you need uh, because we can come out of this better.
that's one of the, I think the most inspiring things is that things are subject to change. I absolutely believe that wholeheartedly. So with that being said, this has been another episode of the Speak Easy podcast. Hearts. And <laughs> remember, I appreciate each and every one of you because without the Speak Easy podcast listeners, there is no Speak Easy podcast show. So make sure that you're joining the conversation, bit.ly forward slash World Voice Community. Join the free Facebook group because we want to know what you have going on and how this series resonated with you. Until next time, guys, don't forget to press it out. See ya.